Hey, what's up? This is Dave from Revocation. Today on this episode of Jackson Thrashed, I'm going to be showing you some of my warriors and the modifications and injuries that they've sustained along the way. So this warrior right here, very special to me. This is the newest WR7 signature model of mine. Um, it's based off of the original Jackson Warrior that I got when I was uh, when I was just a kid. I got a USA model. It was a it was a graduation present. My parents got it for me. I played that guitar all the time. Took it on tour. Still have that guitar. I really wanted to do a, a seven string signature model based off of that. So this one's pretty new. It doesn't have any dings on it yet, uh, but it does have some some alterations from my original. So obviously. It's a seven string, so that's a difference right there. It's got the push-pull knob here, so I can coil tap it. It also has my DiMarzio Occult Classic signature pickups here, so I work with DiMarzio to, to dial in pickups for this guitar with the, with the longer scale length. And that's another difference right there. It's got the 26 and a half inch scale, uh, different than the 25 and a half inch scale on my, my six string models and on my previous WR7. So it's got the Luminlay side dots here. These come in super handy when I'm uh, playing dark stages and yeah they did an excellent job they kept the the aesthetic of my original warrior with that ferrari red look and updated it to make a, a seven string signature model out of it so this is the counterpart for my ferrari red i had to had to do a, a lambo yellow again this one's pretty brand new so there's not a whole lot of dings and scratches on it except the headstock essentially i was tuning and the tuner fell off where, where i had it positioned on top of my case and just totally took a chunk out of the headstock. I was super bummed. I like, I know that I'm going to get dings and scratches in the guitar, but this was like right out the gate. First tour, I took a chunk out of the headstock. Luckily, uh, Cannibal Corpse's guitar tech, Babyface, is a good buddy of mine and he worked his magic and actually it's really kind of hard to see the injury that was sustained here. So he did a, a great job patching that up. So. Hopefully that'll hold. Other than that, it's the same specs, of course, but except it's got a maple neck here and a reverse headstock. Here we have an older signature model of mine. This one's a roasted ash warrior. It's got the shorter scale length, so it looks a little bit different there. And obviously the aesthetic of the natural wood grain is totally different from the previous models I just showed. This one, you can see here, it's got some some wear and tear where my pick is because this is a natural wood finish and I'm doing tons of trim picking live and just like sweating into this thing, moving around. Uh, sometimes I'll kind of dig in with the pick a little bit uh, and some of the, uh, the wood is kind of starting to wear away here by the pickups. Little dings and scratches on it. There's some, some dings here near the bridge. There's a nice little sweat stain here from playing this thing live on night after night on some hot stages. And I don't think it's got any dings on the, uh, yeah, it's actually got a, it's got a little bit of a ding on the, the headstock there. With, with guitars like this, with, with all these pointy angles, it's kind of impossible not to catch it on a corner here and there. But again, this one's holding up pretty darn good, uh, all things considered. My final warrior I'm gonna be showing off today. This was actually the first custom shop warrior that I ever had built for me. Um, like I said, my my parents got me the OG Ferrari Red Warrior. So this was my, my first uh, endorsed guitar with Jackson where they made it to my specs. So this is the oldest one I've had, so it obviously has the most damage done to it. Uh, you know, we can see right here, a nice little chunk taking out of the horn there. On the back, there's some more sort of chunks and pieces missing. You know, some little indents from buckle wear. Uh, I don't think the, actually the, the headstock's pretty pristine. The, the back of the neck is pretty pristine as well. So luckily uh, there's no, no damage there because I like, I like a smooth feeling neck. And if, if you get like, especially with like a, a, a gloss finish like this, you got little chunks missing. It can feel a little bit weird. Luckily my straps never broken around that live. So I don't have any major surgery that's needed to be done to these guitars. But yeah, they've definitely, they've definitely seen some, some things. But yeah, I, I, I treat them pretty, pretty well at the same time. So I try not to overly abuse them, but with, a, with an extreme shape, sometimes uh, you're gonna catch a corner here or there. Oh, there's actually another little little chunk there that I just noticed, see? I'm finding new, new bits of damage as I inspect them further, but that just means you're playing them. So, you know, if your guitar is pristine, you're not going out there and playing shows, so gotta rough them up a little bit.